Okay, so for our last video of the appendicular skeleton, we're going to go over the carpal bones of the hand and the tarsal bones of the foot. Um, so the best way to remember these bones is that little uh, mnemonic, stop letting those people touch the cadaver's hands. And it will be important to be able to pick up a model uh, in class just like this and be able to uh, differentiate between all the bones and if it's a left hand or a right hand. So the way I like to do it is that I like to locate first the hamate bone just because I feel like it's the most unique bone because of the hook right there. So I like to situate myself based off of the handmade. And if you remember the mnemonic, stop letting uh, those people touch the cadaver's hands. You know, let's see if we can add that here. So, stop letting those people touch the cadaver's hand. Apostrophe, maybe. So, the way I like to do this is realize that there are four bones kind of on, a, on the top sentence and four bones on the bottom sentence. So if my hamate is here, the word that precedes it is, starts with the letter C, so that's the capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. And the top sentence ends with a P for the pizzy form. Pisiform, purple. Pisiform. There we go. Uh, Triquitrum, the lunate, and the scaphoid. So I'm just kind of go over those again real quick. And maybe let's see if we can add it here. So we have our scaphoid first. So it's going to be the most lateral one in anatomical position. Right, so this is an anterior view, and remember in anatomical position you have the palms facing outwards. So the thumb is going to be on the lateral side. And the scaphoid is going to be the first bone, top sentence, so most superior. Scaphoid followed by the lunate. Followed by the triquetum. Right there. Excuse me, right there. So stop letting those people. Now we're going to go down our second sentence, right? So imagine this is a. This is our first sentence right there. Stop letting those people. Here's our second sentence. This is the trapezium. Uh, on our trapezoid. Just like a thing like the, tra like the trapezoid in my Capitate will be next. Very large. And our final one is the hamate. Let's see if we can enlarge this. Cool. There we go. And honestly, I think that's going to be the easiest, most straightforward way to kind of remember all these bones. Just uh, locate the hamate. Remember that the hamate is always medial. So if you are looking at the hook of the hamate and it's on your right side, then you know that you're looking at the right 
hand because the hand mate will be medial. Right, so imagine the rest of the, the skeleton here. If you pick one up and it happens to be on the left side, then you know you're looking at the left hand. And then from there, you can identify four bones at the top, four bones at the bottom, and be able to differentiate between the triquedum, the trapezium, and the trapezoid. So moving on, we have the metacarpals. Uh, always remember like a thumbs up. The thumb is the first finger, the first digit. So here's our thumb, first metacarpal. So you can write that as the first metacarpal of the right hand. Second, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal. Now for the phalanges, an individual uh, is known as a phalanx. So these are the phalanges, this is a phalanx. And they're divided into proximal, middle, and distal. So this would be the distal phalanx of the second digit of the hand. So to pick a random one, Okay, so I know that one, two, three, this is closest, that's distal. So it would be the distal phalanx of the one, two, three, four, fourth digit of the hand. And then note that the thumb only has a proximal and distal phalanx, no middle phalanx. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the foot and what we're going to do is we're going to look at this from a superior aspect that'll be kind of easiest for our purposes get rid of whatever this is okay so here's our foot we'll start with the calcaneus which is this large one. This is essentially your heel. It's slightly difficult to maneuver because of the angle that I'm using this. There's our heel. The talus, I like to remember um, T, this mnemonic T as in top, talus. So this is the articular surface of the talus, but it is still part of the talus. So it's the entire talus bone, calcaneus. The cuboid is always going to be on the lateral side. So these are cuboid, whereas the navicular bone is going to be on the medial side. So this is the navicular of the foot, the cuboid of the foot. The cuneiforms are going to be these three bones here. And they're going to be divided into medial, intermediate, and lateral, hence M I L. So here's our medial cuneiform, intermediate, and lateral. The foot's also going to have metatarsals and phalanges. So these are the meta metatarsals of the foot. So for example, this is the fourth metatarsal of the foot. And then you're also going to have phalanges. So this guy, for example, is going to be the proximal phalanx of the third digit. Remember, thumb and the big toe is going to be one, two, three so of the third digit of the foot. This guy, for example, is the distal. I right? think, uh, what is the relative position? So distal furthest away, distal phalanx of the second digit of the foot. And then just recall that the big toe is only going to have a proximal distal phalanx. So 
so to quickly review, we have the calcaneus, we have the talus is this entire bone, the cuboid, the navicular, the medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiform. And then if we go back to our hand, Hamate, stop letting those people touch the cadaver's hands, scaphoid, lunate, triquedum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate, and metatarsals, one, two, three, four, five, and then your phalanges. Proximal, middle, distal.